Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And as you can see in front of you right now, oh, it just refreshed 49 seconds ago, a update in the Ripple v SEC lawsuit was shared. It says the SEC has filed a motion for extension of time. Just, just wait, it's actually not as bad as it looks until March 18th, 2022 to respond to Ripple's motion to strike the supplemental expert report. Ripple would then file its reply to the SEC by March 24th of 2022. And guys, I basically promised that I was going to try to always be as quick as possible when these lawsuit updates come out or so. And really you can't beat 47 or 49 freaking seconds i was clicking and instantly getting to the video all right make sure you press the like button if you if you if you uh, like that but if you guys still remember from a couple of days ago i basically shared with you guys a full overview of what was going to happen in the ripple v sec lawsuit for i would say the next couple of weeks and one of the things we went over is this sheet but the sheet was not as beautiful as it is right now. We can kind of see everything that was going on in there. Let's go over it really briefly. We are awaiting several discovery related decisions that hopefully will be issued soon. Also, the recent decisions denying the SEC's motion to strike Ripple's lack of due process and fair notice affirmative defense and the individual defendant's motion to dismiss the SEC's first amended complaint have triggered other actions and deadlines. Hence, this new update going over everything. So, we had the motion for partial reconsideration of Magistrate Judge Ned Burns' deliberative process privilege, opinion, and order. And in that, there was already something said. This has been fully briefed and a decision is expected soon. If the SEC is ordered to produce documents, they may very well file objections to Magistrate Judge Ned Burns' decision with District Judge Torres. The deadline for that is no later than 14 days after the judge's decision, and then Ripple has another 14 days to respond to any objections. That's 28 days before District Judge Torres even has to start thinking about it, which puts us well into April. When I saw that, I was thinking, that is going to be the biggest part for right now. But if you guys remember it correctly, there is actually a part here at the bottom. But before we get into exactly the decision for today, let's quickly cover the, the knowledge again about everything that's going on. We also have the motion to compel turnover of the Esther Brook notes. This has also been fully briefed and we are awaiting a decision from the Judge Netburn. And we have the DPP appeal to the Second Circuit, potentially, sort of. Now, okay, let's quickly cover exactly what is happening today. We just got an extension, what for, what does it mean? Is it bad, is it good? Ripples and the individual defendants motion to strike the supplemental expert rebuttal report is about a new report which the SEC put up a little bit ago. So here is exactly what it looked like when it was posted a couple of hours before we got the fair notice strike and the motion to dismiss denial. Ripple and the individual defendants move to strike an impermissible late filed SEC supplemental expert rebuttal report written by Dr. Albert Metz. The SEC objects to the motion. Jeremy Hogan had this to say about it. How to analyze an expert report, lawyer in 101. Read the plaintiff's expert report, fail. Read the defendant's expert report, fail yet again. Realize you do not understand them because these are two sides. There's experts from both sides kind of shouting at each other, barking at each other. If you are the defendant, that is good because the plaintiff, so again, if you are rippled, this is good because the SEC has to prove everything they have the burden of proof now again there's a little thread about this so let's quickly dive in and read ripple has attacked my favorite issue in the case whether anything ripple does as a business substantively affects the price of xrp ripples expert did such a good job at tearing up the sec's expert that the sec expert tried to slip in a belated amendment to this report this is what has been going on behind the scenes for the last three months. What we are seeing here are just two of the battling experts. Apparently, there are 16, however. Always remember that if the experts battle to a tie, the defendant wins every single time. And I don't mean to downplay the importance of these reports. They're likely the only evidence of one of the prongs of the Howey test. So this is critical. The expectation of profits from the efforts of others part. 
And so they are vital to the case. And let's again come back to exactly what happened then. Well, Ripple and the individual defendants motion to strike the supplemental expert rebuttal report, barring any request for an extension of time to respond to the motion to strike the supplemental report. The SEC's objection to the motion is due on March 16th. There may also be other opportunities for the parties to challenge expert reports. We just haven't seen anything beyond this motion yet. Once more, barring any request for an extension of time to respond to the motion to strike the, uh, the supplemental report, the SEC's objection is due on March 16th. So, kind of James Fillon was already expecting this to come. What they basically um, did now is instead of March 16th, they're requesting... Once more, it's not official straight of the bat. They are requesting a little bit of extra time, only two days, however. Not exactly sure why. I think the judge would just grant this because it's just two days, as far as I know. Um, and Ripple then has about a week to respond to it yet again. Plaintiff SEC respectfully submits the motion to request. I think Ripple denied it, obviously. But um, it's just two days. So it's not really too bad, not really too big, as the decision was already going to be the 16th. It's always important to get the, uh, the, the I would say, the full picture. If you just saw extension, even I, I was like, no. I was already going almost into, like, panic mode or something. Like, not again. And I saw March 24th. In my head, I'm still thinking we're in freaking January or February. I was thinking, no, it's so far away. <laughs> it's next week. All right? But I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking that way, too. Then again... This issue, the underlying part, is going to be critical. But the two days or anything like that is not going to change too much, um, at least as far as I know. And then to kind of move on with what exactly you can expect, what exactly is happening. Well, there's a lot of things that are happening in the back end. So the recent decisions by district judge, we've already seen. We've kind of understood everything. It's just mostly about what exactly has been going on in the DPP fight. I kind of feel as if the expert uh, parts are a standalone battle, which are which is still equal as important. What I mean with that is we have the DPP, Deliberative Process Privilege, which is basically the documents the SEC is hiding. Then we have the expert reports, which was the entire battle that took a couple of months that ended February 28th with the expert getting evidence. Right now, it's kind of like a battle back and forward with these guys just kind of seeing who's right, sort of, and, and the whole ordeal. And again, what they want to do is add another change to it, basically, and Ripple doesn't like that. Um, but to that extent, this one, the expert side, is mostly about whether or not this Howie, this one specific prong comes along, the expectation of profit from the efforts of others. And the other has to do with the core of the rest, I would say, everything. Because this is basically, did Ripple get fair notice? It's inside there. Because again, if the SEC did have all this information a couple of years back and they didn't give it, well, that's bad on their part. If the SEC actually allowed people to purchase XRP or they even have XRP, that, that type of stuff is all protected by the DPP right now, the Deliberative Process Privilege. Again, Ripple kind of won that, so they were supposed to get a lot of documents, but the SEC is trying to go on top again to say they shouldn't get it. And that is it for right now. That's everything that's going on. A couple of decisions will most likely come rather soon, as the most important out of everything was the lack of due process of fair notice. And since that's actually pulled through now, most likely things will move rather quickly, but expect a couple more delays and everything. At the end of the day, I don't think we'll change the ultimate schedule, though. So I still think we're going to actually be done with all of this by like September or October of this year. I'm pretty excited about the future of XP, as you've most likely seen over on my Twitter, which I recommend you guys to follow for even quicker updates than on YouTube. Then again, today, I probably couldn't have been quicker than this right here. So yeah, make sure you press the like button, guys, if you enjoyed these quick updates. And adios, amigos.